Supercomputers have existed for a long time. We've had them decades now. But the limitation that you find is that they're very large, they're very expensive in terms of capital cost, and particularly these days they're very power hungry. So for example, they're often located close to hydroelectric power now because the um, energy impact on the environment of supercomputers is becoming a big deal. So my interest is in trying to create supercomputers that provide all of the advantages in terms of allowing you to simulate very large interesting systems, but trying to reduce the energy consumption and the running costs. So medium-sized systems that contain huge amounts of parallel compute within a relatively small system, so something that in principle you could put under a, a desk. In a traditional supercomputer, a lot of the time is actually spent moving data around rather than actually computing on it or transforming it. And that's because traditionally in supercomputing you try and batch things up in order to make sort of big chunks of data they can move around efficiently. The way that we're trying to approach this is actually to really focus on the communication aspect of large-scale supercomputing. Our idea is to break the problem up so there's millions or billions of tiny pieces that can be done in parallel. And that's where we hope that we're going to get lots of efficiency improvements and lots of energy savings. So one of the things that this, this technology, this approach to supercomputing opens up is a kind of playful exploratory aspect to research. But currently when a physicist or a chemist uses a supercomputer, they have to think of a problem, they send it away to be simulated, they wait and then they get back a video or some statistics and they try and think of the next experiment. With the research we're trying to do, we're trying to create something that's much more interactive. By having these smaller supercomputers that can be local, a physicist, for example, could interact directly with a simulation and change parameters in real time and kind of explore what happens and interact with the system. So certain things only become obvious to you when you can see them happening in real time. It completely changes the way that you think of the research you're doing. So we're hoping this technology opens up that sort of playful, intuitive aspect of the research.